All right, everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another week in Hawkeye Pro Wrestling. It is week four in April, and we are less than a week away from Ballad of the Fallen Angels. Now, of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, then you're basically just in this video going to see the weekly shows because I don't want to do a four hour show or a four hour video. Um, I'll, I'd rather break them up a little bit so you won't see a four hour video of me doing both the shows along with this. So I'll probably be doing the weekly shows here to get us into the, the, into Ballad of the Fallen Angels. Um, but then the actual Ballad of the Fallen Angels will be on a, a separate, it'll be on the next video, both the shows for that um, however, this week, of course, uh, we have yet another week, our fourth official week of the Hawkeye Pro Grand Prix 2019. Uh, I will quickly show as we had our second week in Block A. This is where we officially sit in Block A. Prince Devitt, the only man with two solid wins right now over all of his opponents. And as you can see, uh, uh, with six points, uh, then we have Shane Hollister, Tozawa, Sab uh, Sammy Sabay, Dunn, Osprey, and Skrull, all with three points apiece. They're all one and one right now. Chris Jericho, the only man in Block A to not get a win, and has now officially lost twice. But we do move into Week 2 of Block B, and I'll remind you real quick just how that worked. Uh, Shibata, Joe Angle, and Juice all with three points. Cesaro, Adam Cole, Yano, and Sonata all with zero points. So what we will see on Adrenaline was we will see uh, week number two for Block B. And then on day one of Ballad of the Fallen Angels is week three, uh, the next week of Block A. So that's where we officially sit with that. Transition on over to what we have done there and I could take this out of studio mode because now we are officially uh, we are officially ready to start booking everything I will say I would like to get rid of some of these morale issues so at $660 per show I think it would be pretty easy to buy off Ladybeard's happiness uh, we'll really make sure to buy off his happiness with $4,000 and he's perfectly happy so that's fine it's. It almost feels like I just paid him to break Kushida's neck. Like that's what he was upset about was breaking Kushida's neck, and then I gave him four grand. <laughs> but I just don't need morale issues going into a pay per view. That's really not a, not a smart idea. Jericho is a little bit bigger of a, a deal there, at four thousand. So I think I'll give him ten thousand. To make him happy. Now he's happy. All right. He's extremely happy at a $10,000 bonus. I am throwing money out the door right now to ensure that the happiness of my people. Now, fucking Hiromu makes 24000 So I'm going to have to give him, I'd say, probably twenty. Probably twenty. He's still annoyed. God damn. So I don't think I want to give him more right now. Uh, but he's he's... Calm down a little bit, I think. So that's that's at least helpful. Um, I think I'm pretty much ready to go then. Yeah, I think I'm moving on. Everything that I'm I'm still dealing with. Uh, I'm still waiting on three more uh, contracts that I think I've pretty much gotten sealed up and I did um, I, I did throw out a relationship uh, request with a company that after two years it's just one of those things that I don't know how, how big of a deal it might be but I'll, I'll I, I am more than happy to work with them at this point to uh, kind of help me get out of a situation So let's see if I can make this happen. I wonder how much. I wonder how how much more it would. Uh, there we go. All right, unread emails, but no, I'm gonna look first. All right, cool. Looks like uh, we have we have decided to uh, 
We have uh, buried the hatchet over things at this point, which is fine. Uh, it doesn't look like anybody else has, has anything I'll have to worry too much about. So, yeah, we now have a working agreement with Hulkamania Wrestling Federation. Oh, my God. The one thing I noticed, and that's one thing, why is Bobby Roode worth $42,000? I mean, technically, he's worth 18000 a month. I'm giving him 31 because I'm trying to take their heavyweight champion away from them. That makes it even funnier to know that I... It, it, it makes it even funnier to know that I had to way price out WWE and Hulkamania to make this happen. So he's not really 42000 31 but yeah. I'm trying to get him away. Yeah, we are losing money, but that's fine because we're here at Adrenaline. Oh, shit. I got to get my Grand Prix stuff up. I hope to God it doesn't uh, show up on... The stream, I'm sure it won't, but I'm ready to move away from it as a just-in-case. Okay, it popped up away. Cool. Week four. All right. Uh, 31,042 years old. I mean, it's one of those things that it's like I kind of got to, like... Uh, I don't know. He doesn't see. Uh, was he? He's not regressing. For a 42 year old, he's not regressing. He seems to be getting better, a little bit better. I mean, people people peak at different points. He isn't regressing here. Uh, he isn't regressing here. Seems to have plateaued at this point. Uh, like back and forth on the microphone, and acting. So he seems to be all right. He seems to have plateaued. So I'm, I don't mind him plateauing at this point. I mean, it's better than, like, a 42-year-old Bobby Roode plateauing is far less of a problem than a 37-year-old Prince Devitt actively regressing in front of me. That's, that, that, is, the, that is the bigger problem in my mind. Uh, uh, a 42-year-old Bobby Roode means nothing. <laughs> If he's at least consistent with uh, with how his uh, skills are, rather than watching Balor just deteriorate in front of me, that's why I just need to get his microphone and charisma up. Because motherfucker is gonna have to do some talking in like a year. We're not gonna be able to get something out of him. <laughs> he's not gonna be that great. He's not gonna be certainly not gonna be the whole effing show in like a year. <laughs> and I think I got him for four, so. Did I sign him for four? Yes, I did. So, that's a thing. <laughs> um, let me see here. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I needed right, in, right this second. I don't think there was. I want to make sure. Okay, so I've gotten... Oh! Talent trades. Okay. Hey, I got Hulkamania with me at this point. Uh, well, let me get Afanoi Jr. on a loan for right now. <laughs> Even though he's coming here. Uh, I got a, I got a guy I'm going to need for, like, how many appearances are you willing to give me? I'm going to go for 10, and I'm going to work, work my way down from there. All right. How big is Chris Saban for you guys? How, how popular is he? Who can I throw at you? He is a 56, so I bet you I could throw, say, a Matt Cage at you. All right, six dates at a time, so I can get six dates out of Chris Saban. They don't think my offer is strong enough. How about 5000 Okay, $10,000. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're taking Matt Cage. I'll throw you some money. All right, cool. $20,000 and Matt Cage... To get Chris Saban for six appearances. All right. Kind of needs to be a thing. There we go. <clears throat> I feel like you probably know where this is going. With uh, with uh, someone's a certain someone's team not being a thing right now. He needs a potential uh, teammate. 
Oh my god, I just realized I'm going to have Chris Hero where Cesaro is also a part of. Oh my god, I didn't even think about that. When's Chris Hero coming in? Oh, I didn't even think about that. 23 days. Fuck. Ah, uh, this might change things. This might change my ideas about what I might want to do with Cesaro on his days where he's not wrestling. Hang on. <laughs> I need to think a little bit about something here. <clears throat> did I did I have major plans for Balor? Not major plans, because to be fair, when it came to when it came to getting him, like I did when I was doing contract negotiations, I I knew that he was regressing, so it's not like a huge deal for me. Um, so knowing that he was going to be regressing, I couldn't really do much in the way of big plans, knowing that he wasn't really going to be able to deliver in like a year. Like he's got, I got maybe like one solid year out of in, in him. And then the other three is going to be very meh. So I don't have like huge plans for him. Um, maybe give him a little bit of something, but yeah, nothing, nothing major. Um, Saban needs assigned a gimmick and a place on the roster. And a mid-card guy. Cool. All right. And then a gimmick. Where where to see where can he sit gimmick wise? <clears throat> uh he's got to be a heel. A cocky heel. All right. Let's let's make sure he's actually a heel. There we go. All right. Cocky heel. Oh my god. There's a lot of cocky heel things we can do with him. So let's see what we can make happen. Um uh, foreigner, gentleman high society, not gonna uh pretentious prima donna. Maybe prima donna, that'd be interesting. <laughs> We need, we need, what, what What was Kushida? Maybe we could just give him Kushida's type of gimmick. Kushida was a show stealer. Okay, so that's not, it's not a really big thing. We need to, we need to make him something. So a cocky heel. I think, we don't have a good prima donna gimmick, I don't think, right now. Maybe he's a pimp. <laughs> the fucking. <laughs> he, he is Yujiro Takahashi. We'll have him. Oh my god! And we're going to Japan too. I feel like we can maybe spend a little bit of money getting. Um, uh, what's her name? Jack. You probably know. <laughs> I have an idea that you'd probably know her name. I forget it. It escapes me right now. Uh, the one that everyone like. <laughs> it's the Bullet Club girl that the that Yuji Road come out with, and then they got a new one, and then everyone was like, "Hey, where's? Isn't it Mao?" It's Mao, isn't it? I think it was Mao. All right, cool. Yeah, we're not doing the sanctuary, though. Uh, where am I supposed to be? Kansas. Is it this Kansas? No, it's not. Okay. Uh, I think it's Mid-South, then. Mao. Okay. KS, Kansas City Memorial Hall. Once again, for our second week. Uh, before we head off to Japan, Mal Yellow Barbie. There we go. Thirty-five hundred. We should sell out at the Memorial Hall. We'll be perfectly fine where we're at there. Cool. All right. So, what B matches are we doing? Hawkeye Pro Grand Prix. We are doing. Toru Yano versus Cesaro. There we go. There we go. Um. Oh man. K. K. All right. Let's give them 17, 18. Let's, let's make Cesaro, like, let's have him be competitive in these matches. 
By the way, is this doing anything to boosting him right now? Not really. I mean, to be fair, he was kind of regressing in his popularity, so this seems to help a little bit. No Kuiwi. That was a one-off Dale. Uh, Toriyano getting the win over Cesaro. Probably I'll, I'll use some cheap tactics, of course. Uh, this is going to be our storytelling match, just because these two are going to be the guys who can tell the story. So, yeah, open match it, call it in the ring, slow build, and let's do let's do a tainted win. All right. Toriano versus Cesaro, and then what do we got? We have Kurt Angle. Oh, you know what? We'll just do this. Fuck it. Kurt Angle and Juice Robinson. There we go. Honkai okay, Pro GP. All right, Mr. Weak Link, what are you? All right. Juice, once we knock the rust off of Juice, he's going to be perfect. All right. Um... Let's see. Let's give this... Oh, man. Let's give this... Oh, no. This actually goes... Okay. I see what I did. This is a draw. This is... This is... We're going to get Juice over, goddammit. <laughs> Juice is going to get over. Open match it. Uh, maybe not call it in the ring just yet. I don't know if Juice can do that. Uh, but this is definitely... The time limit finish. Hey Noah, <laughs> thanks for the, thanks for the host. Um, yeah, so regular open match draw. Oh, I forgot. Um, slow build it. There you go. Twenty minute time limit draw. Juice goes twenty minutes with Kurt Angle. He is furious. Oh no. Uh, we're gonna keep Kurt strong though. Yeah, I knew you weren't gonna be happy about that. Has this helped in any way to kind of help boost you a little bit? I mean, it seems it's 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 doing something. It's doing a little bit of something. We just need to continue this. Oh, something got in my eye. There we go. All right. Come on, Kurt. Come on, Kurt. You're taking it anyway. I'm keeping you strong, but God damn it. We're doing a time limit draw. Why is he so pissed off about going going to a draw with Juice? I mean, I could probably see the massive popularity difference, but it helps out Juice more than anything, and I figured Angle would be more than happy to help out. All right. Katsuyori Shibata and Sonata. There we go. All right. <laughs> okay. Psychology, stamina, okay, let's do, let's do 12 minutes. Shibata getting the win, of course. Uh, maybe not open match it. How about, we need, it's not really a squash, but it's not really in a, uh, you know what, I, I want to give this like a, like a G1 feel where, you know, maybe he's still put to the limit by him. He's pissed having to work 20 minutes in a one-on-one -on -one thing. It's like, God damn it. Oh, yeah. I keep getting, I keep getting, um, I keep getting uh, people still putting comments on my videos about how I sound like Kevin Owens. And I really don't, I really don't hear it. But I've been spending the last couple days, like, working on a Kevin Owens voice. It helps that I'm already a little bit stuffed up because I feel like that's the key. So I gotta feel a little bit stuffed up, and then I and then I talk like like maybe I got a little bit of something in me, and then I gotta start accentuating at the end of all my sentences. Uh, I gotta have it go up a little bit, and then maybe I start to sound a little bit more like Kevin Owens. That's 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 what I had. <laughs> there we go, Shibata Sonata, and then Grand Prix. And then I would assume this would be main event. Oh, boy. I actually don't know if this should be main event. <laughs> uh, Hawkeye Pro GP. 
All right. 57 psychology, motherfucker. Uh, you don't think you'll ever on here? <laughs> God damn. Okay. Um, psychology. Okay. Psychology is not a thing I can really put into this, but let's do. We can do 18 minutes, I guess. Get that psychology up a little bit. But what is the psych? Okay, psychology is going up though, so that's good. Ah, <laughs> uh, dude, goddamn! I feel like <laughs> I honestly feel like Yano Cesaro might be the main event. That might be the way this works. Um. Oh my god! I should use. The eighty. I should use the stamina to their to their advantage a little bit. We're gonna make it like thirteen minutes, and then Joe wins. Uh, open match. Let's do. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Is Kevin Owens still here? I wanted to say hi, but I had a fight to finish in Xenoblade. <laughs> I don't know why. That's just. It's like the lame version. I, I felt like that was just the lame version of. Uh, oh God, what is it? Um, inside the actor studio, <laughs> it's like when someone gets asked about a character. I don't know if you ever seen enough inside the actor studio when when people who do characters like and um, James Lipton is just like, "Can I speak to?" Like they did that with Family Guy, and he's like, "Could I speak to Stewie Griffin? Could I speak to Cleveland?" <laughs> It's just like, could I speak to Kevin Owens? And then the whole crowd, yeah! Um, I guess we go all out, see if we can make this work. Uh, submission vi finish, though. We're going to get that Coquina clutch. There we go. Ah, damn it! I don't know if Yano versus oh, what should be the what should be the fucking mm. okay. Um, I think I saw enough of the SNL version. <laughs> I've seen too many of those actually. Of like, cause cause what happens? It'll be like James Lipton. They just be like. So Tyler, could I speak to Kevin Owens? And then like people in the theater, yay! Like because it's always at colleges, so it's like the college kids, woo! And then I have to like look down and humble, just like half smiling, and then I just be like, "Yeah, what do you want? Is there something you need? Something, something you 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 need to talk to me about? What what is it? What what do you want?" <laughs> And then that's when people, yay, he did it. The popularity thing is what really is keeping me from doing that. The thing is, is I got a lot of, like, very interesting matchups. I just, mm. uh, okay, maybe Shibata versus Sonata should be it. I think that might give me one of the best abilities. Because um, it's also a face-heel match, and I feel like the heel-heel... Because we got, okay, we got a face heel over here. I feel like Yano versus Cesaro might have to be it. What's Yano's popularity at? Okay. Um, uh, let's do, yeah, let's do that. Let's do Cold Joe, Angle Juice. Uh, I sound more like Triple H then. It helps that I've kind of had a stuffed nose most of the day. I did a I did a thing called the Holiday Hop, which is a bunch of like middle aged people who live in a particularly nice section of town with their very nice houses and their well decorated homes that that made me jealous and ready to get one of my own. Just a bunch of middle-aged people getting drunk and doing a white elephant Christmas. But it was nice. There was a lot of food. Going from house to house in the cold. <laughs> Fortunately, it was only like, it was like 45, 50 degrees. I think we'd be okay. Um, 
Oh, God, I still don't know if Yano Cesaro should be the deal. I guess so, because that's the one that maybe has the best option. It goes the longest besides Angle and Juice. So we'll do that. We'll just keep it like this. We'll do the heel heel, which has probably got the best. It's probably got the best idea about. Um, it's probably going to do the worst. Angle juice. It, it could be pretty good. Juice, I think, still has some ring rust to knock off. Shibata Sonata might be one of the best, but I think Yano Cesaro might be that. So now at 75 minutes, I think I can start adding a few things in. I would like to do, all right, I'm going to add in maybe a little bit of something here. Let's do uh, Samoa Joe, Adam Cole, and who's the next guy to face Joe? So we can maybe build to that next week. Oh, my God, it's going to be Juice. Oh, I don't know if I should put Juice out there right now. That might not be the best. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kurt Angle. How about that? All right. So this will help out everything. Joe refuses. Uh, okay, hang on. Joe holds on to Clutch until Juice runs down to... Oh, man, I guess Yano would be the best option, actually, considering it's Adam Cole. I, I really feel like that'd be the best option. Hang on. And it could work into the Yano Cesaro thing. I don't know. Oh, man, I really don't know. See, everyone's kind of tied in right now. Uh, Yano runs down to help. Yano and Joe stare down. Until Yano leaves. So it's kind of like a little bit of a stare down. And then Yano just kind of thinks better of it. He has he has better stuff to do right now. So selling, I guess selling and Yano might be on overness at this point. This will help everything. <laughs> That's the famous last words in booking. Uh, success, uh, I guess low injury risk. And then maybe a minor success here. Angle and Juice. Uh, let's give Juice Kurt. All right. Uh, let's see. Juice backstage praises Angle before match. Angle sees him and wishes him luck. So just a little bit where uh, Juice does a promo about facing Kurt Angle next. Uh, kind of praising Angle as a guy where it's just like, oh, shit, you know, I was really big of a Kurt Angle fan when I was younger. I don't, I don't know who Juice liked. I'm sure if I watched the – I'm sure if I watched the thing from January or last year when they had the road to Wrestle Kingdom 11, I'd have a much better idea as to how it actually worked. <laughs> Uh, Shibata versus Sonata. Okay. Let's do Katsuyori Shibata. And, uh, let's do, let's do Akira Tozawa. How about that? Yeah, he can't really talk, so maybe I'll have to do something else. Oh. Sex appeal. Katsuyori Shibata's sex appeal should be higher than it probably is. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not so much now if he came out with like his unstyled hair at the G1 deal. <laughs> but still. Um, uh, Shibata warming up for GP match. Uh, Menace might be. You know what? What is his menace at, honestly? His menace at is 17, really? Alright, I've got a better idea then. Shibata warming up for match. Devitt walks by and Shibata confronts on 
Devitt's behavior lately. Nah, good enough. So, I guess we'll just do... You know what? We'll do entertainment. Fuck it. Um, yeah. I feel like I feel like we'll be far enough into the show that it should be... It might be fine. It'll be better than we think it's going to be. I think I think we'll do better than than we we might actually than we would normally do. I think that's uh, once we get a crowd properly warmed up, it's good. Um, let's do Katsuyori Shibata. Uh, Sonata's out there. Hiromu Takahashi and La Sombra. So, Sonata is helped off by Hiromu, who walks by La Sombra, who appears disappointed in them. Ooh, okay. <laughs> so Lasombra doesn't do anything. Takahashi, I guess Takahashi's not really doing anything. It's mostly Sonata selling and then maybe Shibata selling. So it's a success for him and then maybe a minor success for Lasombra. So I want to plant the seeds for stuff. Ooh. <laughs> um, is it is it going to make me sad to see Cesaro's entertainment stats? No, it's not bad. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, let's do Cesaro. Oh, I still don't have Chris Hero. That's right. Um. I want to see if there's anything I want to do with the guys already here. I'm trying to think. Anyone that would make sense. All right, how about, yeah, we can do Adam Cole. How about that? Cesaro promo. About the GP so far. Cole interrupts. Uh, they exchange insults. And Cesaro leaves. Cesaro has a tie, has a match to prepare for. He doesn't have time to be doing this. Cole, I don't think actually has all the, the. Okay, that's fine. Cole, you know what? We'll have to give Cole a little bit of something. He'll have to. He'll have to figure out how to work a microphone. We're fine. <clears throat> um, uh, I'm trying to think. I'm just looking at what I had thus far and when the inevitable Cole Yano match is supposed to happen. Where the fuck is it supposed to happen? Did I literally wait until... Oh my god, I li it's literally... Okay, it's literally like the second to last... I wonder why I didn't make that. Okay, I got a couple of interesting matchups that night, but it's literally like the last match, Cole versus, like, the uh, at least that last week. It's Cole and Yano. The more you say we're fine, the less I think you're fine. <laughs> it's a good point. It's a very good point. Um... I'm just the the main the main thing I'm just trying to figure out. I do talk a lot and and do something like that. The main thing I'm just trying to figure out is how I want to make everything work. That's the issue I have is how I want to make everything work here. Um, because I have things I want to do, but I it's like I can't really do it right away. But I want to start building to stuff. Hmm. So I don't okay Adam Adam Cole Toriano it doesn't I guess this doesn't have to be like the last the last bit so 
There you go. Kathy, how's it going? Appreciate you being here. Um, let's do entertainment selling. I can do like four minutes. Yano sells his match as Cole forces his hand up. And hugs Yano uh, in celebration. So he's being a little, he's been a little worse for wear with uh, Yano. And that's when I, and that's when he tears his rotator cuff. Um, <laughs> all right. So now it's the extra bits. So now that I've done the GP stuff and I've and I've booked that and gotten that pretty much taken care of. <clears throat> now. I'm down to the extra bits. So I'm just kind of bringing that up. See what I got. I kind of already brought in the toes. Did I bring in the Tozawa thing or what was it? Uh, Alright, I did the little Sombra thing. Uh, everything else has been pretty much on its own at this point. So we definitely at least need... <coughs> oh no, we'll do, we'll do Brother Ray... Jay and Mark Briscoe. All right. Entertainment, entertainment, entertainment. The Briscoes in Ray's office want the tag titles. Ray says they have their shot. Uh, at at Ballad of the Fallen Angels and Shelly ah Ray says here we go Shelly has a partner for this Saturday perfect been pushing them hard in New Japan. Save almost got a heavyweight title fight with Shibata. They have bad chemistry. Oh wow. Oh nice. Ninety nine. Jesus. Uh, so we'll give them four minutes. We'll do minor successes here. <clears throat> and I think we'll put this like maybe over here. Um. Hmm. Okay. What did I do with? I know, okay, so there's Tama, Kenny, Reynolds. All right. We, we'll we do the Monday Night Raw thing of opening up with, with kind of a, a bit of a deal. Reynolds explains helping Tama last week by saying it's his fight to get his win back. So he lost in November. And so the motivations were to, uh, you know what, we'll just put a nun here. Tama doesn't even have to show up right now. Maybe he'll show up later. But the whole point is that he didn't want to do this without... He didn't want to do this um, against someone like Kenny. He wanted to get his win back against Tama Tonga. I'll explain it more <laughs> when we get to the show. Um, let me see here. I want to maybe put a show closer because I feel like Yano Cole is not really show closer material. Um, let me see here. Feel like okay, so we need a Prince Devitt Akira Tozawa thing. That's a thing. And then Shinsuke Nakamura, but he is off screen. Devitt out to talk about Tozawa and says it's only 
Uh, hang on. Says only, what is it? Thursday, Friday. Three days left. Tozawa confronts Nakamura vignette. So once again, we're using Devitt and Tozawa as like, uh, oh shit, here comes Nakamura. I guess it won't be rated on anything right now because it's just a vignette. I mean, I think it'd probably be overness, but I'm I'm not going to worry about that right now. So we're going to do like major success. We're going to get people fucking hyped for Nakamura's debut. Um, we'll put that like right there. Both Chase Owens and Hangman Page were involved in a 98 A-star match. Oh, my God. Um, 117 minutes, which means I can do... I have eight minutes left of stuff, which is fine. Um, Tama Tonga. Alex Reynolds. Brother Ray. Okay. <clears throat> Reynolds with Ray. Who wishes him luck. Saturday. Tama confronts Reynolds. No, let's see. Maybe not confronts. <clears throat> I need like uh, I need like a little bit of something here. Hmm. Tama walks by who fights with Reynolds put through oops put through table ah hang on fights with Alex put through table. I need just a little bit more. Just a few more characters. Uh, Reynolds with Ray. Wishes him luck. Saturday. And we'll just do wishes him luck. Tom walks by. Put through table. By Ray. So kind of almost like a re... It's sort of a... a not like a huge rehash, but a little bit of a rehash with um, the the angles leading up to their uh, revolution match. It makes sense. Uh, I'd say neutral, and I'd say a low risk. You know, it's just a table spot. Uh, I'd say definitely a success and a minor success here. It's not a huge risk. It's just one table spot. Uh, actually, that's how we'll end it. That feels like an, a show ender right there. And now we have one more spot to put in here. Ah, uh, who do I want? What do I want to do? I have stuff to do. Let me let me see my storylines and see if there's anything I want to do right this second. Um. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm trying to see if I could start putting in a couple of uh, different, couple of different things right now. <clears throat> okay, I've got an idea. Alex Shelley, Lady Beard, Paul Heyman. Shelley backstage. Lady Beard, uh, blindsides and beats him down. Heyman walks over, impressed. Discusses, uh, I don't have a lot of room. So we'll just leave it as is. How about that? <clears throat> so that's the final four minutes. Selling, selling, microphone. I guess just microphone. How about that? 
Halloween Havoc cut the main event off halfway through. <laughs> uh, neutral, let's do low. Success, minor success. There you go. And there you go. 125 minutes. And we'll put that uh, maybe... Where is the Shelly thing? The Briscoes. Oh, you know what? Maybe we'll put it like right here. That seems like an idea. So, how about that? We'll put that like right there. Perfect. <clears throat> Book the Adam Cole situation. He won the New Japan Cup. Bad chemistry. Didn't get a shot yet. Challenge Ishii for the Intercon. Yeah, you, you could do that. Until you can maybe get the title off Shibata. Or make it a make it a triple threat. I know that doesn't happen in New Japan, really. But it's, you know, chemistry is not really too much of an issue in multi-man matches. I think I hit on just about everything there. So I think we're good with this. <clears throat> cool. God damn. All right. So starting off very hot here in Memorial Hall in Kansas City. Uh, Reynolds comes out, explains helping at Tomatonga last week to open up the show, saying that it is his fight to get his win back. Of course, he lost back in November uh, to Tomatonga for the heavyweight title at Revolution and wants to prove that he can beat Tomatonga, and he doesn't want to have to face Kenny Omega for the title. Not because he's afraid of him, but he needs to prove to himself and everybody that he can beat him, and he will take his rightful place at the top of Hawkeye Pro Wrestling again. We move. Got, oh, boy. Well, I didn't think it was going to be like that, honestly. That was... It's two heels. What the fuck? It's two heels. Yeah, the odd face heel combination, and we still got an 80 out of both of them. What the hell? Oh, pretty good chemistry. Nice. So, great wrestling and a decent reaction. 13 minutes, Samoa Joe beats Adam Cole with the Coquina Clutch. And a solid match. All right, cool. So, very interesting, to, to say the very least. I didn't think that was going to turn out the way it did. So, yay. <laughs> And Joe gets his three points, another three points. Adam Cole not getting anything there. <clears throat> Joe continues to hold on to the clutch on Adam Cole until Tori Yano runs down to help. Yano and Joe stare down until uh, Yano decides to leave uh, with Cole. Decides that it's not worth uh, dealing with some old Joe right now. Joe has been steamrolling through people the last couple weeks that he's been there. Maybe not a good idea to deal with... Uh, to deal with him right now we go to the back juice is backstage ready to cut a promo on his match against kurt angle tonight in the grand prix he faces angle and uh praises angle he was a, a big fan of angle when he was growing up and uh angle sees uh juice they have a bit of a back and forth between them there's no real harsh feelings between them there's not going to be any unsportsmanlike uh, dealings perhaps between them and uh, wishes him luck you know we'll, we'll see how this turns out between Juice and Kurt. Kurt is clearly pissed off about having to to go a full 20 minutes so it goes the full 20 minutes uh, time limit and Kurt Angle and Juice Robinson uh, will take a draw only a 71 that's about what I figured it was going to be uh, slowly for building the match. Okay, so some of the negatives are chemistry, physical ability, of course, odd face yield combination, booking decisions. You know, a lot of things that I figured were going to happen. I'm sure it would have been a little bit better match if I just had Angle go over Juice in like 10 minutes, but I would like to boost uh, Juice's uh, deal a little bit here. So that's what we got, 20 minutes, so each of them getting a single point. Congrats to Juice on going 20 minutes with Kurt Angle, who is not happy about having to wrestle that much. I don't think his knee has 20 minutes in him. Uh, still made it, though. Brother Ray is in the back with the Briscoes in his office. Uh, of course, the Briscoes want the tag titles. They, uh, they, they asked about it last week, and uh, Alex Shelley said he was going to find a partner, and Brother Ray informs them that Shelley has indeed found a partner for the tag title match at Ballad of the Fallen Angels, and the Briscoes will face them for the tag titles. We go to the back. Katsuyori Shibata uh, also getting ready for his Grand Prix match uh, in just a bit. Prince Devitt 
uh, walks by. Shibata confronts Devitt on uh, sort of the the change in his uh, in his behavior over the last several weeks, and he's kind of uh, he's kind of brushed off by Devitt. Nothing really, nothing really comes of it. Devitt, you know, uh, you know, he gets confronted by Shibata, but he just uh, has some unkind words for him, and then just eventually just brushes him off. He's very focused on the Tozawa thing. Uh, we go to oh my god, that worked out amazingly. <laughs> Lady Beard looked dreadful though. <laughs> Alex Shelley's backstage. Lady Beard blindsides him. Uh, and beats him down, of course, unhappy about what happened last week as well as uh, the previous weeks. And uh, Lady Beard uh, getting a little bit of revenge uh, measure against him. And uh, as, as Lady Beard is starting to kind of uh, wind down a little bit over Alex Shelley, Paul Heyman walks by and he's uh, sort of impressed. Of course, he's been showing up every once in a while in his uh, quest to... Uh, look for a male participant in uh, Heyman International. He, of course, leads Heyman International on breakout, but he would like to also be a part of Adrenaline with male clients. And he is very impressed in how Lady Beard uh, took out Alex Shelley with that. We get to Katsuri Shibata versus Sonata in just 11 minutes with an ankle lock. Okay, I gotta get I gotta get that away from Shibata. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's slightly different, but I mean, now I have three guys with ankle locks, basically. Um, either way, Sonata uh, with the win, or Shibata with the win over Sonata in 11 and a half minutes. 83 is very nice. He basically carried Sonata through that, and Shibata gets his three points. Sonata will get none with that win tonight. Uh, Shibata. Uh, it celebrates his win as Sonata is helped off by Hiromo Takahashi. Uh, so as as uh, Takahashi's kind of carrying Sonata back, uh, we don't have Kenny, we don't have Nick, but uh, La Sombra is up at the top of the ramp, and uh, he kind of has a, a a bit of a moment with them where he just kind of looks at them disappointed, shakes his head, not doesn't seem very happy with uh, the the way they're doing things at this current moment in time. Uh, but other than that, they end up still walking to the back. Uh, Devitt comes out to talk about Tozawa, and of course, in just four days, or three days, I'm sorry, in just three days at night one, a battle of the Fallen Angels in Japan, Akira Tozawa faces him in the main event in a Grand Prix match. So Devitt and Tozawa... Uh, we'll have that, and Devitt has, uh, of course, reminding Tozawa that he's only got three days until that, until until their match. Uh, Tozawa comes out to confront him. They they look like they're about to come to blows. They they have a little bit of arguing. Look like it's about to go into something. Akira Tozawa invented a new catchphrase that will likely boost his ability on the microphone. I might just leave that alone because I don't think you need me going ah 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 into the microphone consistently. I, Cause like he he invented ah ha ah, ah, right here. <laughs> I don't know if that would be like trademark. Maybe it's like oh oh oh. <laughs> I don't know, maybe he barks. Maybe that's his that's his like his time and Titus brand allowed him a new catchphrase. So it's just a Kirito's out going ura ura ura. <laughs> I have no idea. Akira Tozawa has a new catchphrase, though, and it did amazingly for them. And there you go. Holy shit, that's amazing. That's just what we needed for Tozawa, because I think his charisma is amazing. So to add that is great. <laughs> um, either way, there you go. Uh, they're both interrupted before they can get to blows by a Nakamura vignette. And uh, I don't know if that... Did that do a whole lot? I don't think you really... It really doesn't mean too much, I think, with, uh, uh, you know, Nakamura was there, but he gained some momentum off of that. But either way, Cesaro cuts a promo about the Grand Prix backstage uh, and how, how it's been so far. And uh, Adam Cole, uh, it, it, he was around earlier. He's still nursing some injuries, but he interrupts them. They exchange some insults, and uh, maybe Adam Cole was looking to uh, further further get his ass kicked by a guy like Cesaro who knows 
uh, either way. He he had to suffer through Joe. Maybe Cesaro, maybe as Cole was nursing his injuries, as walking by, Cesaro says a little something to him. They exchange insults, and Adam Cole looks like he's about ready to go round two with somebody. Uh, but Cesaro decides better of it, and he just leaves because he has a match to tend to uh, in tonight's main event. This is a racist. It's probably a lot worse. Oh, God, I forgot about that. He just literally invents a new racial slur. That That's Akira Tozawa. Ah, uh, ba 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 what? I forget what's supposed to happen here. Okay, so he has a new gimmick. Okay, that's right. I needed a gimmick for him. Yeah, change the gimmick. Far too soon. Well, I mean, I, he didn't have one. So it's like he goes from not having one to having the gimmick that he doesn't need one. I mean, I figured something's better than nothing, but whatever. Oh, okay. That was the best idea. That was the best idea. Wow, great chemistry between Yano and Cesaro. So there you go. Great wrestling, good heat in the main event. Toriano beats Cesaro in 1819 uh, in classic Toriano uh, style, illegally using the ropes for leverage, getting a bit of cheating over Cesaro. And uh, even though Cesaro seemed off his game, still pulled off a great match with, with Yano. And uh, a fantastic match to uh, to end on there, as Yano will get his points for his win. Cesaro not getting anything there. Uh, Yano sells his match. Of course, he just barely made it through against him. Adam Cole comes out. Of course, he's very happy that uh, Yano won. Uh, also, in continuing the fact that uh, he kind of helped uh, keep him from getting too hurt from uh, Samoa Joe, so he kind of annoyingly like forces his hand up despite the fact that Yano's maybe nursing part of his arm. Not too happy about that, but he hugs Yano in celebration, and uh, Cole and Yano uh, continue their celebration afterwards. We get to the final segment, and Reynolds is back there. Re Alex Reynolds, we haven't seen him since the beginning of the night. He's in the back with uh, Brother Ray, and they're discussing, of course, this Saturday or Sunday... It'll, they'll be night two for the heavyweight title. Has Jan overworked an 18-minute match? I have no idea. I'm sure he probably has at this point. <laughs> I'm sure he's worked plenty. Uh, so, yeah, Reynolds uh, Reynolds and Ray are back there. Tama walks by, uh, just kind of dealing with life. And uh, uh, they, they have a bit of a confrontation as he notices Alex Reynolds and Brother Ray's deal. Has a little bit of a confrontation, perhaps, about uh, Brother Ray and what has been an obvious uh, bias towards Alex Reynolds. Of course, we, we definitely saw that in November going into Revolution, and we see it again here with Brother Ray's bias towards Alex Reynolds again. Uh, so uh, after a bit of arguing, they fight, and uh, seems like Tomatonga is starting to get the upper hand on Alex Reynolds. Brother Ray, at first, trying to uh, break things up. Uh, decides to, uh, to to beat down upon Tamatonga and help out Alex Reynolds and eventually uh, finds a table that's maybe sitting in the hallway, maybe up against a wall or something, and puts him through it. And that is how the show ends, uh, with Tamatonga lying in a bit of a heap with Brother Ray showing his obvious bias towards Alex Reynolds going into the pay-per-view. And 86, Juice Robinson used far too much. That's fine. He is gaining popularity, damn it. Sixty minute Texas bull rope tied foot iron death match. Oh my god. <clears throat> that worked out really well. I that worked out I didn't think Yano and Cesaro were gonna have such great chemistry between each other, but hey, that worked out. I'll take it. Uh, emails are awaiting. Yano's feeling the effects. That's fine. 0.95 TV rating. We got 715,000 viewers up from 709,000. Also had a better show. Or, yeah, slightly better show than we had last week. Hopefully we can do a little bit better with Breakout as well. But a sellout, nonetheless, at Memorial Hall. 
Glad to see that. When was the last time Tonga lost? Uh, let's see. It's certainly it's it, it's probably been a while considering his uh, his current status in. Uh, oh man, he lost a little bit of popularity, kind of with some of this. That's fine. He'll be fine. Canada. He must have gone up big in Canada. God damn, he just shot up there. <clears throat> But, uh, God, when was the last time he lost? <laughs> uh, he lost a six... Okay, Will Ospreay took the pin, but he lost a six-man tag uh, March week four. So four weeks ago, he, he lost. But I'm sure you're looking for, you know, other stuff. The last time he lost was against Brother Ray in the lead-up to Revolution. And that was with interference by Alex Reynolds. So the last time Tama Tonga lost, funny enough, was in the lead up to Revolution against Alex Reynolds when uh, he helped Brother Ray beat him. Can I get on local TV in Kansas City? I don't need local TV in Kansas City. I'm on national TV at this point. Yeah, I'm on I'm on Access TV at this point. I'm I'm shown nationwide and in Canada. There's there's literally no need for me to do local TV in Kansas City. Um Appreciate the thought, though. Uh, 88,000, man. I didn't do... I mean, to be fair, I wasn't running a huge building, so that's probably why. <laughs> Size-wise, we're, we're getting there. Boy, are we getting there. Okay, Mid-South is up to 54. The The magical numbers right now... The, the magical numbers right now is uh, 41. That needs to be a 41. That needs to be a 41. And at least one of these two needs to be a 41. So out of these four 37s, three of them need to be 41s. That's what I need. I also need to keep looking at uh, like what we got here because I think some I think uh, there might be some uh oh uh oh Rev Pro going out of business. Oh shit. Oh, God, they're not nearly as big as I thought they were. Southern England, a 28. All right, can we can we help buy them out? What are we at here? 22. Hey, I could use the boost. Am I am I potentially using them as an idea to, uh, to just boost my popularity? Sure. It's probably not anyone I want. Drew Galloway, but I think he's hurt. Pretty sure he's hurt. Yeah. He's got a fucking spinal cord rupture. Jesus Christ. Like, he is fucking out, out. Uh, there's, like, no one here that I would want. I don't think that's Zack Knight. Or maybe that is, actually. I, I saw that. It looked like hair. I got Paige. Maybe I should... <laughs> no. Uh, take over. What? Hang on. Set to make wide ranging cutbacks fall into decline. Oh, so they're not in a bad enough position yet. As is WWE. WWE is, oh. Complete tailspin with attendances dropping rapidly. Many of the top stars on the brink of walking out. The company could be out of business by the, oh, fuck. No, the WWE is not going to be out of business by next month. That's fucking insanity. That's not going to happen. Falling attendances, though. I would love to see what their show looks like. Let's see. 11,000. Uh, yeah, only 11,000 and 10,000 people showing up. And 24,000 for Extreme Rules. Yeah. Such, such declining attendances. They're probably just not doing as good of shows, and that's probably why. Let's see. 77. There's a 57. 88. God, what, what the fuck gave them that much? Oh, Ambrose versus Wyatt got a 97, and then Roman Reigns and The Miz beating Del Rio and Cena got a 96. Jesus. Yeah, I don't see anything that's saying, that just says tailspin. There's all the Knight family, yeah. Just bring them all in. All right, so nothing I really particularly need here. 
Yeah, that's that's what most that's what most reports say about WWE right now. Is they're totally going to go out of business right now. It's just a matter of time. Uh, Mid South. I guess we're going to do. You know what? I guess I technically don't have to. But you know what? I'll probably. Uh, oh, you know what? I've got an idea. I mean, no, you know what? That, that it makes the most sense that you'd have. I mean, you're gonna bring you're gonna bring two shows and two nights there. That's probably your most obvious thing right now. All right, uh, GP stuff can go away. Oh uh, wait, no, I can't really get rid of it because I'm about to do. I, I might do my pay per view so. All right. Um, oh, you know what? Hang on one second here, because I do at least need to show the fact, and I don't have it up here just yet. Ah, uh, you know what? I can do it for the pay per view. How about that? We're good. It makes more sense for the pay per view anyway. <clears throat> All right. So, okay. Match wise, we're kind of open this week. For uh, for matches, I'm not 100 percent sure just what to do because we're pretty much we're at the finals for the women's tag belts, but that'll be decided in Japan. It almost should be decided here. It almost it would be better to be decided here rather than Japan, honestly, just popularity wise. <clears throat> um, but okay, so I'm kind of wide open at this point. Let's do. Let's find a potential main event. All right, so we had Dash. All right, Dash. Because I think we had Kana. Kana didn't wrestle last week, but Kana's got a title match, so she'll be in something. Dash needs something. Mmm. Ah, you know what? Leva Bates seems like it'd be the best option. Dash versus Leva. We can kind of continue some of that stuff. Okay, what do we got with this? 80 Psychology, 73 Stamina. Cool. And we got uh, 89 Psychology, 77 Stamina. Okay. Let's put it like 19 minutes. Dash will get the win. Uh, storytelling, right? Well, didn't I say like eighty something for her? Eighty. Yeah, that's probably good to make them the storytelling match. Open it up, call it in the ring, slow build it, decisive win it. All right, there's our main event. Uh, we need to throw in some more matches though. Uh, let's do you know let's do some of the losers from our uh. From our tag stuff. So who who could use who could use a little bit of something? Uh, Death machines. Death machines will face the MYC, and we'll give them like uh, let's give them like eight minutes. How about that? And then I think Allison K should probably get the win. <clears throat> Uh, I think open match is good because I feel like Evie would probably be the more over of them. Because I don't think either... Eh, it's very back and forth, honestly. Eh, we might take away that. Because <clears throat> I want it more heavy towards Death Machine, so we could do that. Decisive win. And maybe not call it in the ring. But we'll just leave it as is. We'll make it very, like, do what you want in the ring... <laughs> Here's your winner. Has to be decisive. Perfect. Um, and then let me see here. Mm. Let's do... Let me look at the history. Whoop. <clears throat> All right. Mercedes, Martinez, and Emi. You know what? We should put Hikaru Shida out there for a match. It makes it, it'll make sense. Let's do let's do Hikaru Shida CCK. I don't know. 
Hikaru Shida hasn't really wrestled wrestled, I think, in a little bit. Let's see, when was the last time she wrestled wrestled? Uh, about a month ago. So yeah, we should probably probably put her out there. Because <clears throat> the last time she wrestled was when she got that, that briefcase. So she's got that, and now she'll need a heal. What would be a good... Ah, should I do Athena right now, or should I wait? I've got an idea with her. Actually, yeah, I've got an idea, and we'll do that. We'll see what she can. We'll see what she can do in the ring. And yeah. <clears throat> do I know Walter and Ring Conf? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I will say this because I feel like. This is going to lead to you should look into them. I do I do look into a lot of people, but I generally don't sign them. Just because I kind of... At this point, I'm already like so full, as is, with people. And bringing in more. It's, it's never anything personal when someone asks me to like look into signing somebody. It's just I already have like 60-some people. When I should probably have like 40-some. I should probably have at least 10 less people than I have now. Um, oh, how much time should we give them? They got they got decent enough stamina. So let's do let's do 18. Sheeta getting a win. It's great. Athena's gonna Oh, you know what? Um yeah, 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 we'll make this happen. Uh, open match slow build and we'll do uh, oh damn okay uh let's do tainted win pinfall and we're gonna do interference on Athena <clears throat> by Mercedes Martinez So it'll be kind of confusing, but it'll be something. And we have 51 minutes. Damn. All right. So we've got more matches to potentially put out there. Let's do... I'm looking at what, I, what I'm planning on. Let's do... Maybe another one-on-one. -on -one. Put someone in the ring who's quite good, and not in and not wrestling on Saturday. <clears throat> uh, Mary Dobson. She doesn't really get a whole lot. Maybe we can start looking into potentially helping her out a little bit. Who could she potentially work with? Uh. Mia Yim, Nicole Matthews. I mean, it could probably be... It kind of could be Kimberly. I think that's about the best right now. Uh, Mayu could be another potential one. But I kind of want to give her a win. And Kimberly has had a little bit... Oh my god, I screwed that up. Hey, Skalix, how's it going? Uh, so yeah, we'll put Kimberly up over here. Kimberly, there we go. All right. And I think this might actually work out pretty well. 88 stamina, 78 psychology. 82 psychology. 67 stamina is not great. Um, but we'll give them like 17. And let's give Mary Dobson a, vic uh, a win here. <clears throat> Um, let's see. Open match. Let's slow build. Too many workers in your saves. Yeah, dude, there was, there was a point, I think, where I actually, uh, one of my buddies, uh, my roommate plays TEW religiously, and he had, like, 150 workers in WWE, and he had to make, like, a whole bunch of brands, and he still didn't hardly use as many people as he wanted. He just went and signed, like, everybody. Um, let's see here. 
Uh, decisive win. Yeah, let's do a decisive win. How about that? All right. So we're gonna get Mary Dobson. A oh, you know what I should do? I should look into giving her her new picture. I don't know if that's a. I don't know if they have anything for her just yet. I, I kind of want to see. Just real quick, hang on. I bet you they probably have a, a, a new picture of her. Guaranteed. <clears throat> oh yeah, they totally do. Hang on, because I if I'm gonna go in between shows, I might actually, I might actually grab it. So let me download it, and then I can throw it. I can I can throw it together between. Uh, is she Sarah Logan? Yes, she is. She is she is what's now known as Sarah Logan. <clears throat> so there we go. Got a got a much more recent picture of her now. I don't remember how long ago that picture was, but. Yeah, I think we're good now. Um, okay, so 70 minutes should be... Uh, yeah, 70 minutes should be good there. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I might need before I start throwing in uh, potential... What's the word? Angles, that's what I need. Before I start throwing in angles... <clears throat> no, okay, I think I'm good then. All right, so Dash and Leva is definitely going to do this. Dobson and Kimberly should be good. Let's do, uh, yeah, we'll leave it like this. I think that's probably from bottom to top. That's how it should go. Death Machines NYC to open. Sheeta and Athena will probably be okay. Dobson and Kimberly could probably be... Dobson and Kimberly might actually end up being something like it might be a, a steal the show type type uh, match. Who knows? Dash and Leva should be pretty good. In fact, I might give her a little bit more time. We'll give them. We'll just do twenty. We'll just do twenty. Um, all right, and then the rest of the time can be angles. So let's <clears throat> let's get this in here. Um. Uh, I had to think of her name. Allison K and Jessica Havoc. I don't think they can do mic work too well, can they? No. You know what? We might just make this we might just have them do that anyway, just so they can upgrade their, their mic work. I mean this is that's the whole point of breakout is to take some of these new girls and start pushing them up high enough that it might that it they can it can work out into something. Whoops. Death Machines are unhappy about being out of tournaments. Look to punish MYC. Punish. Look to actually, you know what? Blow off anger on MYC. Ang for goddamn. There we go. So there's nothing really there's nothing really about this besides the fact that they just they 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 want to beat things and NYC are things to beat. Allison K, Jessica Havoc, Evie, and Kaylee Ray. <clears throat> I think selling is probably the best thing here. I don't know what their selling looks like. Okay, I'll take it. 76 is good. 76 is good. 76 is good. Okay, it's all right. 78, all right, cool. Allison K might be the weakest. Never mind, she's the strongest. I stand corrected. I retract my statement and have me go fuck myself. <laughs> uh, I'd say low. Death Machines continue the assault 
on NYC until refs pour out to stop them. So maybe about uh, four minutes of that. <clears throat> there we go. Establish a little bit of dominance for the death machines here. Uh, I'm definitely... Let me see here. Sheeta Athena. Okay. Hikaru Sheeta. Mercedes Martinez. <clears throat> so I got some other stuff I need to do as well. Like there's some stuff I... I know I need. Um, uh, Martinez. Whoops. <sighs> Let me see. Oh my god. Martinez steals. She does. Opportunity trophy. And decides to leave with it. <clears throat> After hitting Sheeta with it. There you go. So we can use the selling part. Ah, okay. Three minutes. That should be good enough. Martinez gets a bit of success out of it. I'd say low injury risk here. There we go. It, may, it seems weird for Martinez to help out Sheeta, but to be fair, she just wanted to she just wanted to beat down Hikaru Sheeta herself. Um, sh oh, let's give her a promo. Actually, it does make sense. Um, uh, maybe it doesn't make sense. Oh boy, <laughs> what would be lower rated? Having her cut a promo. Or having her... Oh, fuck it. <laughs> How about that? Foley is in his office. She the new Martinez just wants her opportunity trophy. And pleads to Foley to stop this. <laughs> uh, four minutes. She just uses her ass. It is a very nice ass, so it should do very it should do very high ratings. It'll be great. <laughs> Kimberly, uh, Lufisto, Jesse McKay, Entertainment, Entertainment, Entertainment. Lee is with Lufisto and McKay and is happy at their new friendship. And is ready to win again tonight. I'm ready to finally do it. I'm ready to finally win again. And take back my place. And potentially become women's champion. And Mary Dobson beats her. In a surprise twist, Mary Dobson, who I don't think has won a match in a while now. <laughs> I have to see this now. When did she... When was the last time Mary Dobson won? <laughs> oh my god. She's had two wins. Where was it at? There. And... Where's the other one? There. That was her last win. Was May. The last time Mary Dobson won a match. Oh, that's even with Rev Pro. The last time Mary Dobson won a match in Hawkeye Pro 
was Blackout 2018. That is the last time Mary Dobson won a match. Is last is last year's Blackout. It has been over a year since she has won a match in a Hawkeye Pro Wrestling ring. She's about to win her first match in over a year. Obviously, Kimberly is not going to take this well. <laughs> Lufisto and McKay look to console Lee. who attacks both of them and leaves in anger. Someone is not happy at how this worked, but major success for her. Uh, maybe some low injury risk here. I guess a minor defeat would be this. Dash and Leva. Oh, you know what? Hang on. Leva Bates. Paul Heyman. Leva's ready for her match. And runs into Heyman. Hang on. Leva still does not like Heyman International. No, oh, hang on. Still does not like them. And Heyman insults their failures. Of course, they've been. He insults their failures because they haven't done too hot in the last in the last several weeks, maybe even the last couple of months. So they are they're not happy about this. Uh, there we go. <clears throat> Let's see, Dash, Leva. All right. Dash picks up a mic and challenges EO for a match, for a match, for a match at Ballad of the Fallen Angels. Leva wants that match. Uh, Heyman... Uh, let's see. Maybe something with Heyman? That seems like an idea. Let's see. Paul Heyman. Oh. Oh, no. Did I actually hit auto name? Oh, shit. Dash challenges EO. And Ballad. Of the Fallen Angels. Leva wants that match. That match instead. Heyman out to accept both on two nights. Eh, that's a little bit. Eh. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that. I, I already kind of know how I want to do this, so. We'll do like five minutes there. I'd say that's a success for both of them. Getting what they want. Um, Let me see here. So there's a few more things I want to add in. Leva Bates. Mia Yim. Courtney Rush. And Athena. 
Let's see. Leave a corp. Open the show. With their distaste of the tournament. Intro Athena. Whoops. Athena as new member. Hey, you got like seven minutes there. Uh, should they do anything? I guess you can. I guess you can talk. <laughs> I don't know if Athena. I don't think Athena could probably cut a promo, could she? No. Uh, you know what? If they're opening the show, who gives a shit? So successes, maybe not major success. A minor successes, I guess. We'll do that. And then she gets a major success for her big debut. So it works. <clears throat> so that's how we can open it up. Oh, they got it up there. Okay, cool. Okay, so we still got a few more things I can do here. We definitely need something with Kana. Kana. Brittany Knight. McFoley. How about that? Foley mediates a contract signing with Kana and Knight. Words exchange. But no blows. Ah, no fight. How about that? No fight. They don't they don't they don't touch each other right now. They just you know what, if Brittany Knight's gonna be out there, it's obvious that, you know, Becky Knox and Ashley Flair would probably also be out there. They don't do anything though, so but they'll take they'll take a little bit of uh, success from being out there. So we'll do like seven minutes on that, and we'll throw this uh, we'll throw this like out here. How about that? So yeah, we'll do that before the Mary Dobson thing. And let's see. We'll do. Uh, Madison Eagles, Nicole Matthews, and Portia Perez. So entertainment here on all three of them. Shimmer and Shine. Uh, with Portia, who is elated. And seeing her friends, friends' success, and look to the title match. Ah. And look to the match. Uh, just like four minutes. That should be good enough. Let's see. Yeah, minor success. Just a just a quick promo with Shimmer and Shine to help build up the uh, the continuing of of uh, you know they have a um, what is it so yeah help help kind of continue the uh, the dealio there with uh, the tag tournament sorry I don't know I, everything like fell out of my skull as I was sitting here trying to gather up all my all my thoughts and so we can do like five minutes of something let me see Heyman's already been out for a couple things Foley's been out for a couple of things I feel like we can give a little bit of something here mm. Mio EO Azumi, Mayu, Paul Heyman again. There we go. Me and Eo argue about Eo's behavior last week. 
Oh, how about this? Hang on. Mio and Eo have buried their heat after Eo's actions last week as EO looks to the future with Heyman International. Ah. How about that? All right, with them. We'll just put them. There we go. And five minutes of that. And we'll just do like minor successes here. So they get a little bit of a uh, uh, bit there for uh, being a part of that. And I want to make sure that I don't immediately. Uh, we'll put it a little bit earlier, maybe. I don't know. Let me see here. Maybe put it like here. Yeah, it's a lot of time between matches, though. I'm trying to see what would be the best uh, down here, I guess. <clears throat> yeah. How about we do that? We do that. She's ready for a match. And then Heyman, maybe maybe Leva walks by Heyman International's uh, their, their, um, their locker room, which leads to this. Perfect. All right. I've got this now. We're good. We're solid. Save it. All right. All right, so here we go. Breakout in front of a sold-out crowd at Kansas City Memorial Hall. Leva Corp opens up the show. And the three-woman team of Leva, Mia, Yim, and Courtney Rush is back up to four as they have dumped Kimberly and have decided to uh, bring in Athena, the, the newest signee for Hawkeye Pro Wrestling. Athena, who has joined Leva Corp, Immediately following her uh, her her debut, look at that show off to a strong start. Even though it's a fifty-seven, sure. Death Machines coming out for their match. They're very unhappy about being out of the tournament, especially the first round. And uh, they were supposed to look quite strong, but uh, unfortunately had to go up against one of the finalists in the Revolution, and uh, unfortunately lost. Uh, so they look to blow off their anchor against the MYC right now. Allison K was the weak link. Oh no, she is shit. This isn't good. <laughs> uh, decent wrestling did not much heat. The Death Machines with a win over Allison K or Allison K winning by submission with a modified Gogo -Go Plata. Interesting. Uh, defeating Evie in that. God, a thirty-seven. Really, Lady Beard does better than that. I wonder if that's her abilities or her popularity, because I feel like she should be pretty decent seeing her stats. Stat-wise, I think she should be pretty decent, so 37 is not great. A lot of 57s, though, I think the further we get their uh, popularity up, I think the better it's going to be. So either way, quite strong. Uh, I mean, it's not the greatest, but I mean that's why I had a solid main event, knowing that I was probably not going to do the greatest in the undercard. Either way, Death Machines get a win over the MYC in tag action in just eight minutes with the match there. Death Machines continue their assault on MYC to continue to blow off their anger uh, by beating down Evie and Kaylee Ray. Refs pour out to stop them and eventually get them to the back, continuing to make them look particularly dangerous. Hikaru Shida, oh my god. Mick Foley learned a new catchphrase that'll likely boost his ability on the microphone. How could Mick Foley learn a new catchphrase after 30 years he's learned another catchphrase? <laughs> I'd like to think that it's I'd like to think that it's uh just a play on what he had before. So like as he's doing his commissioner work, and instead of like have a nice day, it's just like have a decent day! <laughs> <laughs> of course, Hikaru Shida came out of this looking excellent since it was using her sex appeal. It was primarily looks-based, which is hilarious to know that the segment was primarily looks-based. It also included Mick Foley. But either way, Hikaru Shida is uh, 
is in uh, Foley's office, and she just knew Mercedes Martinez just wanted her opportunity trophy, and she pleads with Foley to stop this, try to figure out something that can be done to keep from having this happen. Uh, Foley assures Hikaru Shida that that's not going to be a thing. She won the she won the briefcase fair and square. There's nothing. There's no say that Mercedes Martinez gets a shot at the briefcase. Uh, so they just opt to. He says that don't worry about it. It's not going to be a big deal. Uh, we move on. Madison Eagles and Nicole Matthews shimmer and shine are backstage with Portia Perez. Meanwhile, Portia Perez, the assistant commissioner of Breakout is with one of the finalists. Uh, Portia is elated to see her friend's success and see them in the finals of the inaugural women's tag team title tournament. Let's try saying that five times fast. And uh, they look forward to the match on Saturday. Of course, it'll be Shimmer and Shine versus the Revolution to become the... Uh, we'll see who will become the first Hawkeye Pro women's tag team champions. We move on to Hikaru Shida versus Athena. Of course, we're going to see Athena in her very first match here uh, as a Leva Corp member against Hikaru Shida. And uh, solid work by Shida. Damn, a 70. See, this is this is why I like, you know, giving them their, their time to really shine. Uh, either way, Maja no... Oh, my God. Ichigeki. A Maja no Ichigeki. <laughs> Hikaru Shida beats... Uh, Athena, after some interference by Mercedes Martinez, of course, that seems to uh, confuse a lot of people to see Mercedes help out Athena or help out Hikaru Shida with a win against her there. And uh, it's very short lived as Martinez uh, opts to uh, kind of steal Shida's opportunity, steal op uh, the opportunity trophy from Hikaru Shida. And uh, wallops her with it and then decides to leave with the Opportunity Trophy in her possession. So Hikaru Shida has lost possession of it officially. And uh, as of right now, Mercedes has stolen it. So we'll see what it happens with that. Uh, Kimberly is in the back with Lufisto and Jesse McKay. She is happy at the new friendship that she has with Lufisto and Jesse McKay. That they were so accepting of her to bring her in. And uh, she's ready to win again tonight and uh, show just how good she is uh, on the on the bright side, on the heroic side with the resident superhero Lufisto and her sidekick Jesse McKay. Damn, that's that's what I assumed was going to happen at some point. And so yeah, Mick Foley mediates a contract signing, of course, this Saturday. Kana versus Brittany Knight. Oh, man, I really don't know if I've done this already. I might have already done this. I'm not sure. This is really not good. I can't remember. I might have done this last week. It's one of those things I just realized I might have already done. Uh, <laughs> but uh, either way, uh, words are exchanged. The rest of Revolution is out to kind of uh, side with Brittany Knight. They don't really do or say anything. But uh, either way, it will be Kana versus Brittany Knight this Saturday. Or, I'm sorry, Sunday. It's going to be a night two match uh, at Ballad of the Fallen Angels. <laughs> Something you'd say in primary school. <laughs> I'm not the best at, at writing. I'm not writing scripts on the fly, you know. I think if I had more time, I'd come up with something better and more clever. But I'm trying not to make this, like, four hours of coming up with, like, wrestling promos. I don't. I don't get paid enough. I don't get paid anything. Uh, but either way, decent wrestling. Little Heat. Mary Dobson defeating Kimberly in just under 17 minutes. A 40 for Dobson. God damn. They only got a 61 out of this. Jesus. See, this is what happens when I give someone like Mary Dobson such little momentum. I need to continue using it. Either way, it beats her by submission. Oh, shit. I probably should have done, like, a roll-up or something. Something surprising. But, hey, Mary Dobson cleanly beat her. Kimberly is happy with her new friends. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things that after, like, months of dealing with the Leva Corp stuff and failing and failing as a part of Leva Corp, she's happy to, to be around people that seem to enjoy her presence and seem to have some level of success, despite the fact that Lufisto and Jesse McKay don't really wrestle but either way, she's she's uh, 
you know, after all she's been through, especially being just completely uh, tortured almost by the rest of Levacorp after leaving, you know, it's good to have good to have people that she she truly believes is on her side. But uh, <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to rationalize it. I think that's at least decent enough rationalization. Uh, but either way, Mary Dobson, for the first time in nearly 13 months, gets her first official win. And it happens on Kimberly when she's been in such high spirits. And uh, Lufesto and Essie McKay look to console Kimberly, who uh, repays their kindness by uh, attacking both of them and leaves in a huff as uh, she is extremely unhappy to be the person in over a year to lose to uh, uh, to uh, Mary Dobson. Leva Bates is in action in the main event of tonight, and uh, she has been out of her. She comes out of her uh, uh, locker room as she is ready for her match. Uh, she runs into Paul Heyman, and uh, Heyman, uh, you know, they they exchange some words. They they realize that uh, you know Leva. I guess there's no realization. Leva lets Paul Heyman know she still doesn't like him, still doesn't appreciate them being around. She would make an assumption that she would definitely be the women's champion if they just hadn't interfered uh, as much as they have, or at least this is in her mind, of course. Uh, of course, she she was the one who interfered to keep Io Shirai from possibly having a title match. But either way, uh, she, she believes that if it wasn't for the last couple of months of uh, things that have happened with some of the new people, uh, yeah, she'd be champion again. And Paul Heyman continues to kind of insult her a little bit and uh, over the failures that they've had and perhaps remind her of what she had done to Io Shirai and that this might have been very well deserved on behalf of uh, Leva Bates. Uh, that's about all that she can really muster up at this point as she needs to uh, prepare for her match. Paul Heyman is, uh, walks into the Heyman International's locker room as Mio and Io are uh, talking to one another, and the sisters have uh, decided to kind of bury the hatchet and bury the heat after Io's actions last week. And uh, we see a little bit more of togetherness between the Shirai sisters as well as Izumi and Mayu. And Paul Heyman's happy to see this happen and uh, uh, mediating some of this as well. And, uh, yeah, it seems that Heyman International are kind of back on the right track. And uh, it, Io maybe went a little too overboard attacking her own people. But either way, they look to the future uh, with how Heyman International has done so far. We go to the main event of the evening. And Dash Chisako and Leva Bates. In just over 27 minutes, Dash Chisako gets the win over Leva Bates. Not as great, but I imagine it's because it was only 20 minutes and someone like Leva Bates. Leva's had some good matches, but I couldn't get carried as hard by Dash, I guess. I wonder what it mostly was. Holding back. Low experience. Holding. Okay, they both kind of held back a little bit. Not sure why, but okay. Got a good bonus for slowly building to the match. It was well booked. Hot crowd. Okay. People people still enjoyed it, though. That was good. Dash Chisako getting the win over Leva Bates, though, after about 20 minutes. Uh, Dash, of course, grabs a mic afterwards and demands to challenge Io Shirai, of course, uh, after what had happened last week to Kairi Hojo against Io Shirai. She wants to be the one to do this uh, and avenge Kairi Hojo. And Leva Bates uh, also grabs a mic and says that she wants that match. Of course, a little bit of arguing goes on between them. Of course, Dash Dash uh, sort of insinuates that she just beat Leva. Therefore, there's no reason for Leva to try even to go after EO one-on-one. -on -one. But uh, Paul Heyman comes out to accept on both nights. Uh, of course, Leva won't get a one-on-one -on -one match, though, so we'll find out what Leva gets. It'll probably most likely be a six-man tag or six-woman tag in this case. However, Dash did win, so the possibility is up there that we will be seeing Dash versus Io uh, on one of the nights as well. And that will be the end of the show in 83. I believe that's a good improvement over where we sat 
uh, last week. I still haven't heard anything about any of the three contracts that have been up. It seems like uh, forever. It's only I guess it's only been maybe two, three days. So I bet you we see something about it today. Uh, yeah, I, I would assume it was probably at some point today. Let's let's take a look at this here. Hey, look at that. Afa Noi Jr. is very willing to come back. What do you know? 24 days. All right. 0.95 TV rating. Very nice. We got uh, 715,000 people. It was actually uh, about, yeah, literally had about 200 more people. And we don't have TV Kyushu. So it, all the more impressive that they managed to get more people watching. Uh, is there two Finleys? Because I have a Finley. I think there's two Finleys. Oh, boy. That's my fault. This is from two years ago when I when I threw people that I thought weren't going to be that I thought weren't going to be, uh, you know, meshing, but, uh-oh, what the hell? Come in, the company is cutting the back, so, oh, boy. I guess she left WWE at some point. Uh, okay, so, yeah, I, I decided to pass on Sandow. Is this Fleisch or Who's? This is Fleisch, and I added a little bit of the Who's, and I found out that perhaps there was a little bit of meshing between some of the people that both Fleisch and Who had on here. I, th I was adding select people, but I guess I had added maybe a few too many select people. And so, yeah, there's a few things like duplicate people in here, like, as you see, two Finleys, because there's a Finley who's potentially re-signing with WWE. But, hey, I have Dave Finley as, as a road agent for me. And stuff like that has happened, and there's like a couple like duplicate world titles. Like I think there's two IWGP heavyweight titles. So that's really on me, and I'm just kind of dealing with it. Oh yeah, I forgot Caitlin came back, so I guess NWA decided to sign her. Also, oh, where where are we just at? Nikki Bella. Oh, she left WWE. Maybe she was booted out of WWE. Look at those stats. Oh, my God. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> I'm looking at it. It's like, man, no. There's nothing I need here. I mean, she's kind of over, so there's that. But other than that, eh. Okay, so we're at Friday, and I think we just need to get to Saturday. I'm trying to think in my head real quick if there's anything else I need because I'm at a point right now where legitimately, um, I mean, like, there's nothing. I'm trying to think about literally everything I might need. Um, recommend a push for him. Oh, he's unavailable, so there's nothing I can do about that. Oh, gimmick. We need a face gimmick. I kind of already know how I'm going to use him, so I can build a gimmick around that. By the way, it's great to know that he is officially back back. How about a face brute? We don't really get a lot of brute gimmicks, and we'll see if there's a brute face. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, I have an idea, and I'm trying... Uh, I gotta see what I what I want to do here, because I know how I want to use him. Now I just need to know what what I'm going to put in front of him. Mm. No, Rebel Rebel doesn't really seem to have the idea to it. Avenger, I guess so. We haven't had an Avenger gimmick in a few months. Not since we had Batista. That's actually maybe a good idea. We'll make Avenger. There's there's a good reason behind that. I should still have a picture of him here, right? He should still have one. Yeah. There we go. Is he coming in a joke? No, he's not. I it's. It's one of those things that I could use him maybe as that, but he may or may not come in and almost leave off where he started. And we'll pretend like, uh, like, um, 
Ah, uh, shit, what is it? Anniversary 3 didn't really happen. I mean, Anniversary 3 happened, but we don't worry too much about it. Oh my god, it is 7 in the morning. I... If I even do this, I'm going to go to... Oh, okay. Yeah, let's go to Saturday, but I think that's it. God damn. I've been sitting here for four hours. And if I do the pay-per-views, I'm here till 9 in the morning. And that is stupid. Because I've got two goddamn... Oh, my God. Might do something tomorrow, though. I might. Maybe, maybe I'll... Maybe I'll try to get this done tomorrow or next weekend because Sunday nights, Sunday nights are probably a little bit worse for most people. I could totally do this next Saturday. Do it, dude. Nine in the morning. <laughs> Once again, nine in the morning. Uh, he heal heal. Okay, so I already know I'm changing his picture. I think I gave him, I think I put it under Johnny Mundo. Yes, I did. I don't know if I want to give him Johnny Mundo. Um, oh, my God. Part. Of, oh man, I don't know if I'd actually be allowed. Like, let's, let's say in terms of, let's say in real terms of WWE, I wouldn't really be allowed to use Johnny Mundo. <laughs> Part of me, part of me is honestly considering, because, okay, you had Johnny Nitro when he was in WWE. You had Johnny Impact, now in TNA. Part of me wants to make him Johnny Adrenaline. <laughs> I, I feel like out of all the names, it seems to make the most sense for how he, how he works to be Johnny Adrenaline. <laughs> I really should. I'm thinking about that. <laughs> I'll... I think Boone. Oh, Boone the Bounty Hunter. Oh, my God. Johnny Hawkeye. Oh, Johnny Hawkeye sounds good. Have a... Oh, my God. Impact Monty Jundo. Oh, Johnny Hawkeye actually sounds really good. That actually, oh, Boone the Bounty Hunter would be really nice, but, dude, Johnny Hawkeye. Johnny Hawkeye sounds, sounds like a, he sounds like a, um, what, he sounds like he would be like a cop in like a buddy cop film. Like, he's the wild man, and I don't know, who would be the, like... <laughs> Like Johnny Johnny Hawkeye, he's the he's the he's the the he's in he's the Mel Gibson of Lethal Weapon, and he's he's just a wild man, and you know no one can hold him down. And then his and then like his uh, his partner is an old guy, Kurt Angle. Maybe Kurt Angle. He's been on the force for a while. He's been through a lot of shit in his life. Maybe had his wife die to something. Has a couple of kids, just trying to take, just trying to take him. Uh, just just <laughs> now, I almost want to make that a tag team. Like, yeah, fuck the goats. We're gonna do a buddy cop movie with Johnny Hawkeye and Kurt Angle, and Angle is two days away from retirement, and then Johnny Hawkeye just steps in it for him and pisses off, pisses off the police chief Paul Heyman. Now, Paul Heyman's the mob boss. Mick Foley would be the... Maybe maybe Foley's the police chief. Or Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels was like, I was... You know what, kid? I was once you. I understand, but you can't be doing this. God damn it, Hawkeye. You can't be doing this. There are rules. There are rules to being a cop. <laughs> I am the worldwide underground. Oh my god. As a police team. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. I think... So we're at Saturday. So at the very least, this is the end of the video on YouTube. Because it's been just about two hours. But there you go. We are at Ballad of the Fallen Angels Night 1. 29 oh, you know what? 
Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna change this. Let's not put a year next to it. Here, Battle of the Fallen. Age. Oh, oh, I have no I have no room left. Yeah, let's just let's just not put a year next to it. It just it just seems weird. I mean, uh, who knows what? <laughs> there, Battle of the Fallen Angels, Night One. It just looks weird with a year next to it. Especially when I don't have enough room to just make it like Bow to the Fallen Angels 2019. In the seedy underworld of LA, crime is rife, murders are up, and some mobsters before moonsaults. Dude, that really does sound... That sounds like a WWE direct-to-DVD movie that I would totally watch. I would totally watch that. And he could be a cocky heel. Oh my god. Okay, hang on. Cocky heel. All right, all American band member censor chosen one. Oh my god! Okay, uh, highlight reel, hired gun, hired gun. Oh my god! I mean, rebel, but no. He's a hired gun. Special knowledge or expertise. He's hired to resolve particularly any difficult or complex problems. Overly confident in their ability to deal with any problem. He's Johnny Hawkeye. <laughs> Johnny Hawkeye, the hired gun. <laughs> Next month, Johnny Hawkeye has a second match. It'll be the hired gun, two and a half. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, do I want to do this for two fucking hours? Uh, uh. Oh. Two, oh my god. Alright, I'm going to at least end the video before I, before I consider whether or not I'm about to uh, kill myself <laughs> by staying up. Either way, I, I'm just going to give you guys, I'm just going to at least say goodbye because this is at least it for YouTube. So, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming out. Uh, or thank you so much for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, greatly appreciate it. The next video that you see will be, uh, of course, Ballad of the Fallen Angels, both night one and night two. So thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next one.